Allah 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 which for us, as Queen Lili Uwokul, let me explain, quote, means the love of the very soil in which our ancestors have lived and died, end quote. While most agree that Aloha Aina is central to a Kanaka ethos of being in the world, a sharp divide has emerged on how it is to be expressed in political form, either as a federally recognized native government under the U.S. or as an independent nation state in the international community. Passions and commitments run deep and wide, as we saw in both the tenor of the verbal testimonies and the volume of the written comments submitted last summer to the Department of Interior during its hearings of federal recognition. This division, however, should not be seen as yet another example of Hawaii's you can't get along, but rather as the mark of a vibrant Lahui that rises and expands through debate and dialogue. It is with this spirit that our esteemed panelists have agreed to participate in this forum on the future of the Lahui Uwili Hawaii. It is my honor to introduce in alphabetical order these leaders who have all dedicated their lives and careers to bettering the Lahui through their scholarship and activism, and in the process have paved the way for a new generation of Uwili intellectuals. Kalei Kuoka Eo, an associate professor of Hawaiian at UH Maui College, is a prominent Hawaiian nationalist and advocate for the decolonization and independence of Hawaii. Lili Kala Kame'elehiva, a professor and director of the Kamakaku Okanani Center for Hawaiian Studies, is a citizen of Kalaui Hawaii and an advocate for Native Hawaiian self-governance and Hawaii independence. Deviana Pomekai McGregor, professor of ethnic studies, is a member, member of the Protekoho Olave Ohana and an advocate for Native Hawaiian self-governance and Hawaii independence. Jonathan Kamakaviwa Ole Osorio, professor at Kamakakuo Polani Center for Hawaiian Studies, is a founder of Mana Movement for Aloha Maka Aina, which advocates for Hawaii independence. Please join me in thanking them all for agreeing to be here today. The format for today is a debate on the following statement agreed upon in advance. Quote, Resolved that both the reestablishment of a government-to-government -government relationship between the U.S. and the Hawaiian community and independence for Hawaii are important goals to achieve. End quote. Each speaker will have 10 minutes to give prepared remarks around the resolution. This will be followed by a four-minute clarification a rebuttal period for each. I will then conduct statements from the floor for about 20 minutes. Each panelist will then have two minutes each for summary, and I will give a two-minute closing. As each person speaks, whether they be a panelist or an audience member, we ask that you extend the highest level of respect to those that have expressed what is in or out. Discussions such as these are difficult to begin with, and may even more so, when the law for the Aina does not extend to the fellow Kanaka. We know that strong emotions will arise when we talk about historical injustices, contemporary struggles, and future restorations. But we ask that the words that emerge from that seed of emotion and intelligence are put to the task of building solidarity and strength for all of Hawaii. At this point, we'll start off first with Daviana McGregor. Night alone, night gave birth to Hawaii, a kingdom. 
This is a prayer for life, the life of Hawaii that was published in Kealoha Island newspaper on July 3rd, 1897. And I learned of it through the work of Noi Noi Silva, one of the publications. Uh, the first uh, 11 lines of the prayer are from the Kumulipo, and, and as were the, the two verses there. Um, and so it starts with those first 11 lines of the Kumulipo, leading to the birth of Hawaii and its government, the kingdom, reinforcing the underlying fundamental principle that Native Hawaiian governance is integrally linked with the genealogical succession of Native Hawaiian chiefs in general, and Queen Lili'uokalani in particular, who descend from the omnipotent life forces of the universe. This prayer was published at the point at which self, the self-governance of the Native Hawaiian people was on the brink of becoming distinct from that of the governance of Hawaii as a whole, following the assertion and extension of U.S. borders to include our Pai Aino. From the emergence of district chiefs approximately AD 1000, uh, through the work of Kehaobad, and through the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom and constitutional government in 1893, the government of Hawaii and the self-governance of Na Kanaka Uibi were one and the same. However, when the provisional government and the Republic of Hawaii, supported by the U.S. military, usurped the democratic governance of Hawaii by Queen Lili the lawful chief executive of the Hawaiian Kingdom and Constitutional Government, Native Hawaiians organized political organizations of self-governance that were independent of the self-proclaimed settler governments and organized to prevent the accusation of Hawaii by the U.S. government and the restoration of the Queen. As of the 1890 census, Kanaka Oidi comprised 85% of the citizens of the kingdom and Kanaka Oidi men comprised 70% of the registered male voters. However, Kanaka Oidi comprised only 45% of the resident population. The seeds of these organizations of self-governance at the time of 1897 were in the 1845 petitions of 5,709 Makainana appealing to King Kamehameha III in 1845 to preserve the traditional land system, not allow non-Hawaiians to become naturalized citizens, not to let Haole own land in Hawaii, and not to appoint Haole to government positions. The seeds sprouted and leafed in the movement against the reciprocity treaty with the Hawaii for Hawaiian political movement in conjunction with the support for Queen Emma against High Chief David Kalakaua in the election uh, for the monarch. The Hui Klai Aina, the Hawaiian political organization, lengthened and loa that, uh, or loa, that plant, that organized, and they organized against the 1887 constitution as a betrayal of their sovereignty. And the Hui Klai Aina was a major predecessor of Hawaiian self-governance, and then continued to become one of the organizations which organized for Kanako Oili governance under the banner of Hui Aloha Aina in support of the restoration of the queen and against annexation. Throughout the period of governance of Hawaii as an incorporated territory of the United States from 1900 to 1959, Kanako Oidi continued to decline as a percentage of the resident population, although they still comprised the majority of registered voters through 1930. Kanako Oidi actively participated in electoral politics using that majority and contended for control over the governance of Hawaii as a whole with the oligarchy of American businessmen and planters who controlled the territorial government. But at the same time, Native Hawaiians also recognized the need to organize new political, civic, and benevolent organizations in order to provide for the well-being of the Native Hawaiian people as those Hawaiians of 1845 and those at the time of the reciprocity in 1875 and those of the Hui Kulai Aina in 1887, and to, to protect the ancestral rights and trust assets prominent among these were the Ahahui Kuonua Hanahabai, who founded the Hawaiian Civic Clubs, and together they worked to reclaim Hawaiian national crown lands, which led to the establishment of the Hawaiian Homelands Program. 
The Hawaiian Civic Clubs and associations of Hawaiian homesteaders assumed the rudimentary functions of governance for non kanaka OED under the framework of U.S. law. The U.S. Executive and Congress developed one set of law and policies for the governance of Hawaii as a whole and its multi-ethnic citizens as a territory, and another set of laws and policies that recognize Native Hawaiians as an indigenous people with the right of self-governance and with whom the U.S. established a trust relationship. Through these processes and over the course of the territorial period and then statehood, the governance of Hawaii and the self-governance of Nakanaka Oibi have become distinct. And I assert that we now have two distinct entities, Lahui Oibi Hawaii and Aupuni Hawaii. And both deserve self, uh, the Lahui Oibi Hawaii deserves self-governance and that right to, to rule our, 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 control our lands. And Aupuni Hawaii represents the multi-ethnic people in Hawaii. The governance of Hawaii in the 21st century is exercised on behalf of the multi-ethnic people who are descendants of and are themselves born and raised in Hawaii, such as President Obama even. It has become inclusive of persons who establish residency in Hawaiian Islands. The self-governance of Nakunaka Oibi is exercised on behalf of individuals who are descendants of the Aboriginal people who prior to 1778 occupied and exercised sovereignty in the area now constituting the state of Hawaii. I am an advocate for the independence of Aupuni Hawaii either through the reinscription of the United Nations Committee on Decolonization, such as happened in East Timor and Kanaki and Tahiti, uh, or the deoccupation process pursued through international court. I am also an advocate for the reestablishment of a sovereign, self-governing entity of Kanaka OEE as a matter of our inherent sovereignty, but also because of the changing demographics of Hawaii, where Kanaka OEE now comprise 21% of the population and 45% of our Lahui Oibi live on the U.S. continent. I support the Kanaka Olovalu process because I want to protect the distinctiveness and integrity of our Kanaka Oibi language, cultural, spiritual, and subsistence, customs, practice, and beliefs for my grandchildren and their children and future generations of Kanaka Oibi. I want Kanaka Oibi to steward and control our own national and ancestral land base as the foundation from which to sustain the well-being and health of our people. I want our Ali'i trust to be protected for future generations of Lahu Ui Oibi Hawaii. I support having uh, the Lahu Oibi government established by the Kanak Yolabalu process uh, and the reestablishment of a government-to-government -government relationship with the U.S. government. I see this as necessary to protect our status and entitlements under U.S. law as long as Hawaii is under the U.S. government. And examples of this, the Native American Religious Freedom Act, which we in the Protect Lavi Ohana invoked to get our right of access and to begin to, 35 years ago, to uh, practice and open our first makahiki season. The Native Hawaiian Healthcare Act, which supports the Native Hawaiian healthcare system. Uh, the Native Hawaiian Education Act, which uh, provides educational programs and scholarships which many of us take advantage, have benefited from. Benefits of housing. Uh, I have been an expert witness in court cases, and I know that a, the reason why we have won in, in cases like Waukele Okuna, or uh, in, in the Waihoi water case, having the water returned, is based on the recognition of our standing as the uh, Kanaka Oigi, the indigenous people of Hawaii. Will the reestablishment of the Kanakoe government affect the quest for the independence of Hawaii? It will, in a positive manner. The sovereign native Hawaiian government can best serve as the platform to support the broader movement of independence for Hawaii in ways that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs cannot as an entity of the state of Hawaii. The Kanakoe process can serve as a formal venue to begin distinguishing the rights of the Lahui Oibi Hawaii from the Aupuni Hawaii. Will the advocates of independence for Aupuni Hawaii um, uh, support self-governance for Lahui Oibi? I ask you, uh, will there be room in that independent Hawaii for Native Hawaiian people to have our own form of self-governance? 
and control over our ancestral base. That is our right. And I ask them to support that. And um, also that we, uh, we could form a united front to establish both the reestablishment of a government-to-government -government relationship between the U.S. and the Hawaiian community and independence for Hawaii. Mahalo.